Wacom has just announced their newest display tablet, the Cintiq Pro 27. While I won't have one to review until October, I thought I'd at least share some images of the device and a few first impressions that I think are noteworthy. I won't go over everything though, because I want to save some content for the full review. As its name implies, this is a 27 inch display. Does that mean a 24 inch and 32 inch model will be coming in the future? Or is this model replacing those because they were either too big or too small? We'll have to wait and see. The resolution of the display has been upgraded to UHD. That's pretty standard for high-end display tablets. But what I am most excited about is that the display can refresh at 120 hertz, which allows the display to react more quickly to your pen input. This should greatly reduce the perception of lag when working on the display. No previous generation Wacom display tablet can refresh at 120 hertz. This new Cintiq comes with a new Pro Pen 3. This is a radically different pen design which comes with interchangeable parts, so you can customize the pen's weight, grip, thickness, the quantity of pen buttons, and the center of balance. Notably absent on the back of the pen is an eraser. That's pretty bold to remove that considering it's a feature that distinguishes the high-end pens from the budget ones. That's not to mention that it's useful to have an eraser, not just for erasing, but also blending, selecting more than one brush, and even for drawing. The pen stand is a mighty cradle that looks far more robust than anything Wacom has released to date. It attaches to the side of the bezel. I think this will do well to hold the pen. It looks much better than the current stands that always seem to topple over or cause the pen to get knocked down. In a return to older designs, the Cintiq Pro 27 has eight external express keys, four on each side, located on the rear similar to the Cintiq Pro 16 second generation, but with a different arrangement. It's difficult for me to tell what is going on here without seeing it in person. The grip sort of resembles a video game controller. It looks like the grip flares out a bit, so it should catch your hand as you slide it along the back. And there is a depression that your hand fits inside, so that should easily guide your fingers to where the buttons are. It seems like the grip has a nice rubbery texture to it, and I bet the rounded buttons feel great. By distributing the buttons on the different sides of the grip, I can see how that might make it easier to find the buttons without being able to see them. Although it looks like a far better button arrangement than that of the Cintiq Pro 16, I can't say I like the buttons being on the back of the display. I'll have to try it before I make my mind up though. Compared to the Cintiq 27 QHD I am currently working on, the bezel on the Cintiq Pro 27 looks awfully thin. It's about the width of the pen, whereas the 27 QHD is maybe five to six times wider than that. A wider bezel gives you room to rest your palm and a buffer zone for your pen so neither abruptly runs off the edge while you're drawing. Even many of the smaller displays appear to have a wider bezel than the Cintiq Pro 27. I guess one benefit is that a thinner bezel takes up less desk space and blocks less of your other monitors. This is one feature that I'm very curious about. I have a feeling the thinner bezel is going to make the tablet feel smaller, even though it has the same screen size. That will probably take the most getting used to for me. Another notable difference is that there aren't any USB ports for peripherals. I use the ports on my Cintiq 27 QHD, so that's going to take some getting used to as well, since I'll no longer have them. There are some holes on the side of the tablet. The round one is where the pen stand or the extension table accessory attach. The rectangular holes are ports to vent heat away from the screen. What's interesting is that the grip has screws on it. They look like they shouldn't be removed, so I think maybe they just hold the grips on. I was assured that it's not a way to attach an option module or anything like that. There are a few buttons at the top. One is probably the switch to enable and disable multi-touch. I'm guessing another is a power button. And the third button could open the display properties, or maybe it can be assigned to something like the on-screen keyboard. There are two rectangular forms on the back, which are where the video and data connections come out of. The fan vents look like they are located on the bottom of the device, which is preferable to the top where a microphone might be. I really hope that fan noise is not an issue with this, as it has been for the previous Cintiq Pros. The Cintiq 27 QHD I am currently using does not have audible fan noise. It's very quiet. There aren't any folding legs on the back of the device, so a stand is required. For $499.95, you can purchase the custom Wacom stand, which offers tilt and rotation of the display. 
Or you can utilize the 100 millimeter VESA mounting holes on the back and attach it to just about any third party monitor arm. The official Wacom stand has a base that looks sort of like a monitor stand. It looks much less bulky and more elegant than the previous generation stands for the Cintiqs. The price of the Cintiq Pro 27 is $3,499.95. That's on the higher end of what Wacom charges for large tablets like this. It comes with a one or two year limited warranty depending on which country you live in. And apparently if you're in select areas of the EU, you can exchange this tablet on site or easily get a replacement shipped to you. That's all I have to say about the Cintiq Pro 27 for now. Be sure to subscribe to my channel because I will be doing a more in-depth review of this device once I get my hands on it in October. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.